then uh, turn to council members for council member comments. Council member Beal. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you to everyone in attendance tonight that took the time to be here and to speak with us. I know for a fact that everyone at our city wanted to see this Boys and Girls Club prosper, grow, and thrive. The information provided to our city by the club, however, clearly demonstrates that those hopes really aren't being realized. After spending over $1.2 million of taxpayer funds since 2012, results matter, and the facts demonstrate that if you compare Rancho Santa Margarita to the program in San Juan Capistrano, San Juan Capistrano is receiving far greater services, far greater services for far less money. Hours of operation, San Juan Capistrano, 35 per week. Rancho Santa Margarita, just 23. Average daily attendance in San Juan Capistrano, 277. In Rancho, 62. Options for transportation from schools to the Boys and Girls Club in Rancho Santa Margarita. In San Juan Capistrano, there's nine different busing and other transportation options. In Rancho, just three. But when it comes to expenditure of taxpayer money, San Juan Capistrano pays just $78,000 per year. But the total cost to Rancho Santa Margarita equates to all in a total cost for each average daily attendee. $3,417, more than nine times higher than the program in San Juan Capistrano. Results matter. And so, in my opinion, the bottom line is that continuation of the club's contract in Rancho Santa Margarita under these circumstances, that is not in the overall best interest of the city of Rancho Santa Margarita and all of its residents. There's if I have one more outburst, I'm going to have the deputy remove you. In we Rancho listened very Santa carefully to everything you said, and we did so without interruption. Please show my colleagues the same respect. In this city, we're paying far more money for less services for far fewer children. I have to say... Over the past few months, I've been significantly disappointed in the misinformation, misleading information that some have spread throughout this community. People have claimed that the process here has lacked transparency, that it was done behind closed doors, things to that nature. That's simply false. There's been two prior public hearings. The agendas are published. They're online. The audio is available. I would urge anyone that didn't attend our meeting on January 10th, 2024, or hasn't taken the time to listen to it before speaking and criticizing the city, to listen to that audio now. Because during that meeting, the city council did make a decision, and we did so unanimously. And that decision was to allow the existing club's contract in Rancho Santa Margarita to simply expire by its terms and to repurpose that space in a manner that every member of the elected city council here determined would better serve the entire community. People have stated that the Rancho Santa Margarita city council members hate children or are eliminating all youth services provided by the city. That's silly, emotionally charged, inflammatory rhetoric, and it has no basis in fact. What we're talking about tonight is one single program, the, Bel the Boys and Girls Club in Rancho Santa Margarita. That's it. But so many other programs are supported by this city right now, today. 
In the Bell Tower Regional Community Center, there are art appreciation classes, painting classes, guitar classes, ukulele classes, ballet, jazz, other dance classes, science classes, STEM classes, gardening science classes, fitness classes, martial arts classes, CPR and health and safety classes, all for the youth of this community, all provided and supported by this city and the members of this city council. That we provide a school resource officer with an expenditure of over $350,000 a year that delivers education programs and provides public safety throughout every school in this community to protect the youth of this community. Crossing guards, $300,000, again, to protect all the youth of this community at 18 locations across the whole city. There's been talk that the Boys and Girls Club is being evicted. That's simply not true. As has been said multiple times, but some don't want to listen, it's a contract. The city hired the Boys and Girls Club to provide services through July 13th, 2024. And a decision was made to simply not renew that contract because we believed unanimously that there's a way to better serve the entire community. They're not being evicted. That contract is simply expiring. There's been talk that families have no alternative after school programs in Rancho Santa Margarita. I've heard that many times. That's false as well. As was confirmed in our staff report and the presentation tonight, as well as by multiple public speakers tonight, there are numerous alternatives currently available in Rancho Santa Margarita. There's been talk that the Boys and Girls Club is needed to serve lower income residents. And I'm sorry, but that's also false. There, the, Bell, the Boys and Girls Club program is open to every child in this community, regardless of the family's income. There is no income threshold. For example, I believe we've heard testimony that children living in a gated community with parents earning six-figure salary have been receiving taxpayer-subsidized child care here at the Bell Tower Community Center. We have changing demographics. That's been discussed tonight. The senior population has increased since our city incorporated 235%, but our school-aged population has decreased by 25%. And despite those changing demographics, our city currently spends 54% more on the Boys and Girls Club per person than we do on our Age Well Senior Services contract, 54% more. Now, I know I listen very carefully to everyone that thinks we're doing wrong here. And I hear many critics say the city of Rancho Santa Margarita should continue to fund the Boys and Girls Club, regardless of the cost, regardless of the small number of beneficiaries, regardless of the fact that 30% of the beneficiaries don't even live in Rancho Santa Margarita, and regardless of our city's changing demographics. But there is a duty of elected city council members. We're elected to be careful stewards of precious taxpayer dollars. And that is exactly what our council did when the decision was made back in January and we unanimously voted to allow this existing contract to expire because we determined there was a better solution. Some parents want the city of Rancho Santa Margarita to, to continue subsidizing their family's child care costs with taxpayer dollars. I understand that desire. I really do. Who wouldn't want a government subsidy? Who wouldn't? Oh, get out of here. I wish our city could help everyone.
Clear the chamber. Clear the chamber. Clear the chamber. Clear the chamber. You have a chance. Clear the chamber. We're going to recess the city council meeting for five minutes to allow some members of the public to get a hold of themselves. Thank you. Please continue, Councilmember Beal. I wish that our city could help every resident that may be struggling financially. It doesn't escape me that since January of 2021, the cost of living in America and especially in California has increased dramatically. This hurts every resident of this community. I hear these concerns almost every day. Food, gasoline, utilities, insurance, rent, mortgage payments, all of these have increased dramatically. Many, many Rancho Santa Margarita residents are struggling to cover these increased costs. But it would be irresponsible for any council member to suggest that somehow taxpayer dollars should be spent to subsidize those personal family expenditures. And similarly, in my opinion, it would be irresponsible for a council member to suggest that taxpayer dollars should continue to be spent on the club's contract under the circumstances that we've heard in detail tonight and in previous discussions. The city of Rancho Santa Margarita gave the Boys and Girls Club, as well as the parents, more than six months' notice that the club's contract would expire by its own terms on July 13th, 2024, half a year. In my opinion, that's more than sufficient time to make other arrangements. In conclusion, the meeting tonight was requested by some in the community who felt that they didn't understand how we got here. So our staff prepared Tonight's report and presentation had a full discussion of all the relevant details. And that's what we've done today at the request of the community to ensure complete transparency. This is how we got here. Some in this community may not agree with the actions this city council has taken. However, for the reasons that have been highlighted in detail in our staff report, our presentation, and our discussions tonight, I stand by our city council's January 10th decision. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, council Member Holloway. Oh, thank you. I would respectfully disagree that it would be irresponsible for a suggestion that the contract be extended, with all due respect. Allow me to read a portion of the staff report. And by the way, thank you for the staff report. It's very detailed. I would disagree with some who said it wasn't. It's very, I know how hard staff has worked on this report, and I appreciate it. I also appreciate those who have turned out tonight, not those who made a scene and walked out, but those who have stayed here to listen to what we believe about this issue. There's a reference on page six of the staff report. It's the same page that Ms. Henry referenced earlier. It says, community services staff surveyed other Orange County cities and has identified that 14 of the 34 county cities, approximately 40%, do not provide any city-sponsored or city-operated after-school programs. One way or the other, I'm not interested in Rancho Santa Margarita being in the bottom 40% of the cities that fund after-school programs. 
I'm not interested in Rancho Santa Margarita being a city that does not fund a program. This issue would be less complicated if there currently existed viable, viable alternatives to the Boys and Girls Club. But with all due respect, there are none. Saddleback Unified School District has TLC. That's the after-school program. It is completely booked. There is a waiting line to get into the TLC. There's only two schools in Rancho Santa Margarita where that would not apply because they are members of the or part of Capital Unified School District. That would be Tejeras Creek and Arroyo Vista. The YMCA serves Tejeras Creek and Arroyo Vista. My wife and I have lived here for three decades. We have three children. My wife quit her job of 13 years. So she could care for our kids after school because we were not happy with the YMCA. I'll just say it. The concerns the parents have raised here and in prior meetings resonate with me. Regarding alternative programs in other cities, the staff report indicates that additional research would be required for more detailed information into funding amounts, funding mechanisms, and program offerings. We don't have that information yet. It's not easy to come by. We don't have it. Ms. Ewing spoke earlier about true earner families in California. I did the research as well. She stole my thunder. It's over 60% in California. Two earner families with one child. It's over 60%. Now, when my wife and I had our children, they're old now, by the way, 32, 31, and 25. Mortgages were a lot less. Gas was a lot less. Buying a loaf of bread was a lot less. I don't know how people who move into this community now with houses that cost over a million bucks can possibly pay a mortgage without being a dual earner family. I wanted to research what was available and what the Boys and Girls Club does for the community. And I'll get to the issues that I'm concerned about in a moment here. But I contacted a gentleman, Gary Hallgren, who is a president of Arity, a mobility data and analytics company, and he leads a team of software engineers and data scientists. He is the gentleman, through RSM Cares, started the STEM program at the Boys and Girls Club. I have their schedule. They have 15 students per class. Today was junior scientists class. Tomorrow is robotics. The next day is the printing club. They have 15 kids per class. They've served 150 kids so far in those classes. They've had a $10,000 contribution from RSM Cares to continue their classes. Mr. Hallgren indicates to me that he's working with applied medical and other engineering companies to bring in engineers to lecture to the children and teach them science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. That's not going to be offered while one waits in line to get into TLC. That's, I can tell you from experience, unless things have changed, that's not going to be offered with the YMCA either. We received emails today, from various senior citizens who work with the Parentis, I'm probably pronouncing it incorrectly, foundation, and they work with children in, through a literacy, literacy, <laughs> perfect timing, literacy program, four days a week with direct one-on-one -on -one reading sessions. We had a little member here, Dylan, who apparently is involved with those classes as well and now can read chapter books and can educate his mom and dad about the different types of dogs that are out there. The concerns of the parents are not lost on me. We're very proud to be the safest city in California. We're very proud to be the most family-friendly city in California. We can be proud of having a children's program as well. This issue is kind of emotional for me. There are issues that were brought up in the staff report of great concern. More than one-fourth of the members of the Boys and Girls Club are not residents of RSM. That bothers me, that our taxpayers are paying for programs for children who are not residents of RSM. That bothers me. That's an issue that has to be addressed. 
fewer transportation offerings than the offerings in San Juan Capistrano and Aliso Viejo. That bothers me. My understanding is that there's only one school that the Boys and Girls Club goes to to transfer kids back and forth, and that's Cielo Vista. If I'm wrong about that, I apologize. I think that's right. Yeah, right. The taxpayers have paid over $1.4 million since 2012 with no adjustment, despite a 40% decrease in the number of members of the Boys and Girls Club. That's a concern to me. But that's why I'm of the opinion that, a, that when Nicole Watson asked for the one-year extension to address some issues, I feel that's perfectly reasonable. I would propose, in fact, I would move that we extend the contract one year so that the issues that I just talked about and others can be addressed, so that staff can research alternative programs such as Kids Factory, which was referenced in the report as well, and research costs associated with even operating our own after-school program, which would be a STEM program or some other facsimile that 11 other cities in Orange County apparently do. I'm really proud to live here. We can do this. We can serve the kids. We can serve the senior citizens. People move here for a reason. And I would move that we continue this, extend this contract per the request one year so we can address these issues and that staff look into this and maybe after six months we can determine whether or not this is going to work or not. But I don't feel, and I agree with Madam Mayor, the contract didn't require a six-month notice provision. And I, I agree with that. But I, as a parent, as a, as, a, as a person who remembers these days, I don't think six months is sufficient for a family to figure out what they're going to do with their kids in the summer and in the following school year. When people say, well, I have to quit my job, we're a two-earner family. I have to quit my job because I've got to be there for my kids. They're not blowing smoke, in my opinion. And I think, it's, I think it's at the very least reasonable to extend this contract one year to allow for some of these issues to be addressed and to address whether any potential alternatives exist. Point of and order, Madam Mayor. Yes. Um, I, the motion that was just made, I believe, is out of order because of what was agendized is to uh, receive and file this report. And I don't believe we have agendized anything that would permit us to approve the motion that was just made. I may be wrong. I'll turn it to the city attorney. But my understanding is one can bring a motion under such circumstances. Good evening, Mayor, members of the city council. Well, both of our colleagues are correct this evening. On the one hand, <clears throat> any type of action taken on a proposed contract extension would have to be provided through direction to city staff, city attorney to prepare and bring back in the future for a vote. So in that regard, council member Beal is correct. On the other hand, this matter is properly agendized. Yes, the staff recommendation is receive and file, but there is the availability for the council to make and entertain other motions as well. Thank you very much. Would you consider restating your motion? Um, I could bring the motion to uh, extend the contract one year or direct staff to extend the contract one year for the reasons already stated. And, yeah, if, and, and if that were not to uh, be appropriate, I'd be happy to put it on the next agenda. And Madam Mayor, we'd love to be able to speak on this issue. Yes, well. certainly. Thank you. Does that conclude your comments? I think it does. Okay. <laughs> All right. I don't want to call on the next person. Uh, Council Member Holloway. I will second that motion for purpose of discussion, if I'm doing that correctly, for the city attorney. Okay. Uh, clarification, I would need additional direction on what type of extension. Are you saying one year at the $120,000? Yes. I, I don't think we've gotten there yet. But Well, I would appreciate that. That's, that's exactly right. Okay. One year at the $120,000 for the reasons previously stated. Thank you. Council Member Holloway. Thank you. I'm disappointed that the other folks left because I think, you know, the benefit of everyone's conversation is why we're here. We have three entities working on. We have the public, we have the council, and we have the Boys and Girls Club. We don't have competing interests. We're all trying to get to the same place. Um, and I appreciate this process and everyone's time for being here because it's getting late. Um, but there's a good reason for being here. <clears throat> 
The quality of the staff of the Boys and Girls Club is not in question here, or the programs they provide. Not in question. There's no, there's no question. I've spent, I think, Nicole's still back there. Nicole and I have talked over the last three weeks. I think we're about 10 hours worth of conversation. And also talk, talk to a board member. I don't know if Mr. Redwoods is still here. There, there he is. Okay. Nice to meet you, sir. Um, to learn more about, um, and I'll, I'm going to be honest, I've been inside the Boys and Girls Club five times in my life. I, it's not, I don't go, so I, I needed to learn a few things. But I want to say something that, for clarification purposes about the museum versus the Boys and Girls Club. As Kenny brought up a good point, and, and, I, and I know there's that, that sentiment, and, but in reality, that's not the case. The short history of the museum was that the city council approached the, uh, or members of the city council approached the city manager and said, hey, would you put together a proposal? Um, the Cadillac version of what a uh, museum would look like. Jennifer and staff did that, gave us what you ended up reading. Um, the Cadillac version of that is large enough to where the only space would have been where the Boys and Girls Club was. But there's not, the Boys and Girls, or the, the museum was never tasked to the city staff to replace the Boys and Girls Club. That conversation never occurred. But I understand why there's that connection and why I would be you know, confused too. Why, why are you displacing um, the Boys and Girls Club for that? That's, so at the, the end of the day, and Kenny, I'm glad you brought that up because it's, it's, it's a good point. That's just not the case. That's, that conversation has never taken place. But the timing was a, is a perfect storm of, of that. So that, that's just to, just to settle that. Um, as we know, working with kids is challenging but always rewarding. Um, a lot of us in here, I mean, and I, I will take exception too to people that say that we're heartless and, uh, you know, we don't like kids. And, you know, okay, uh, they have the right to say that, but it's just not, it's not a reasonable statement. Um, the, the, the statement that it's always about the kids is true. It is always about the kids. That's what we do as humans. We're, we're always going to work towards the benefit of kids in every opportunity that we can. But in our position as elected officials, we are also tasked with providing services that includes cost analysis. There's no revelation in that. Those of you that have ever had to do anything like that, whether it be your household or your own business, you, you get that concept. And that's what we're tasked to do here. Um, in the case of the Boys, RSM Boys and Girls Club, it's my opinion that the cost per individual participant is high, using a, at an average daily attendance of 60 kids during the school year and roughly 45 kids during the summer. And I'm not, the, the numbers, you know, this, these are approximate, because it's, they're kids, they come and go at different times, not, it's not an exact, exact science. Um, the taxpayers of Rancho Santa Margarita with the $120,000 pay roughly $2,000 per student per year. You've seen that and heard that. If you count the contribution to the RSM Boys and Girls Club, that number increases to $5,700 per student per year. I'm not, I'm just, just giving you that fact. And it's not always about fact with facts and numbers with kids, but it is certainly part of what we're legally responsible to look at. That's a big number. And the, the reason I know that's a big number is I've, I've been in education for a large part, 25 years, so I'm, I'm semi-familiar with educational programs, the cost of those, et cetera. Now, the numbers, you know, inflation and everything else, cost of, of services is, has, certainly has increased. But in, in my my opinion and my research, that's a big number, okay? And there's a reason for that, and that's part of the conversation that Nicole and I had over and over and over again. And I can't thank you enough, Nicole, for providing me with the paperwork and the, the conversation and, and, you know, getting to where we're at. Um, and you've seen, putting that into some sort of perspective, um, we pay roughly $250 per person for public safety services in the city. There are other co comparisons that show a, sim a similar metric, but I will leave that for another discussion. Other concerns of mine, and then I'll ultimately get to my thoughts here. 
Are some taxpayer dollars spent on Boys and Girls Club families that do not qualify for financial assistance is roughly 50%, give or take. So that is a concern that folks that have the ability pay roughly the same amount as folks that don't have the ability. And, and there's a possibility you know, that, that having that conversation with the Boys and Girls Club, is that something to address? It, it possibly is. Um, I'm, I, would, I would be interested if the fees for qualified families could be adjusted based on some level on their ability to pay. The RSM Boys and Girls Club staff costs, I think, if, if looked at, have a possibility of being reduced, which would reduce our per student cost numbers, and would also that, that per student cost would uh, decrease if there were more numbers, and we've had different uh, thoughts about that and different numbers, and whether or not that increases or not, well, that time will tell. And I'm, I'm curious what the three to five year projection regarding participant increases based on the club's efforts are in that area. area. Nicole talked a little bit about some of her plans to um, you know, get some boots on the ground and, and try to increase that number. All this being said, I would be in favor of a 12 month contract extension at the same funding level for the purpose of meeting with the Boys and Girls Club to see if costs can be reduced at a minimum of at least 15%. The mechanics of, of that would need to come from the Boys and Girls Club, not the city. The time frame I am comfortable with in reference to a proposal from the Boys and Girls Club is no more than six months. And the reason I bring that up is if the decision ultimately, if these two entities get together, when they get together and try to work this out, if the decision is the same, we, we clearly need to give the participants time to make alternative choices. Um, if, that, if it doesn't work out to, this, to the uh, satisfaction of at least three council members, then it doesn't work. But I think that time frame is a reasonable amount of time, and talking to the Boys and Girls Club seems to be a reasonable amount of time to get together and see if there's any way to, and the city manager, like she mentioned, will need some, a lot of direction on what, that, what that's going to look like if, the, if this goes forward. So we would have to give our opinions like we're doing now. Those are my concerns that need to be addressed. That per cost, 5,700, and I know we're not responsible for all of that. That, to me, is in my, in my research, is a big number. And I need that number to go down to feel that we're doing the right thing for all the residents of this city. And I think that can be done. I think there's ways to do that. Whether or not that means some of the things that the Boys and Girls Club do um, are done at a different level, there's, there's, it's a big, a big question, so it's not something you can uh, talk about in detail here. Um, hopefully the interaction from our city staff and the Boys and Girls Club and potential proposal can occur sooner than that six months for various reasons. This will be brought back in a public forum, so the, the issue that people thought we were you know, in the middle of the night having discussions together to somehow not share this is, is just not the case. It was, it was, it's not the case. So um, the fact that this is being presented at the public level, it'll be a, a public process, so there shouldn't be a concern about that. And again, I'm, I'm sorry that the folks left that weren't able to hear us continue our conversation. Um, that's all I have at this time. Thank you very much. Council Member Figueroa. Um, well, thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody who reached out to me via email. Um, I really appreciated hearing your opinions and your thoughts. And also thank you to everybody who's been coming to these meetings. Um, you know, I know that you all have busy lives, and uh, you'd probably rather be somewhere else. Um, so uh, we appreciate you being here tonight. So I actually have a few questions uh, for Nicole. Nicole, are you still here? There she is. Come on down, Nicole. Um, Nicole, first of all, thank you for all your hard work with Boys and Girls Club and how you benefit our community. We so appreciate that. Um, I want to let you know that I really appreciated getting your letter. Um, Nicole sent us a letter on March 25th, and I appreciate you recognizing the city's um, contributions to the Boys and Girls Club because, unfortunately, I think that's gotten lost, you know, during um, these months and so forth. So I appreciate you um, recognizing that. 
But in your letter, you um, outlined two options for consideration, and I'm not sure if everybody knows what option one is and what option two is, but you presented two options for our consideration. Option one is um, to request the renewal of a contract for a one-year extension and the funding allocation of 120. And then option two, um, you said if option one's not available, that you would like your contract or agreement, I know it's not a contract, but agreement to continue through your summer, se- your summer session um, of August 12, 2024 with a financial support of $10,000. So I guess my questions to you is, have you started the enrollment process for your summer session? I believe it was being reviewed today and getting ready to launch for the summer sessions, but we have family members from Rancho Santa Margarita to make sure that they were on the list, depending on what happened today. Okay, thank you. Um, And I did share concerns initially about the six-month notice. I I feel like life is so difficult these days. Um, It's hard to do anything, unfortunately. Um, and especially find uh, new facilities um, for parents to find new child care. Um, you know, I have three children. I remember that was during the summer in particular, a very always trying thing to find out uh, what my children were going to be busy doing during the summer. So um, I feel like we need more time. The Boys and Girls needs, needs more time. So I'm very happy to support a one-year extension. Um, at the Boys and Girls Club here in Rancho, um, or if you prefer to stay during the summer, either one. But I feel like um, we need to give you ample time to, you know, find a new facility or whatever that, you know, you need to be doing. But um, I feel like, you know, more time is, is needed. So thank, thank you. you very much, I appreciate Mayor. that. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I appreciate... Um, my council colleagues remarks and so I want to thank the members of the public who have come here tonight expressed their um, point of view and I think this is the joy of democracy in that you can speak to your elected officials and you can share your thoughts so I I have a few of my own Um, it to me it was fascinating today that On this day, according to a state audit uh, that was released today, we learned that over the past five years, California spent $24 billion of our taxpayer money to tackle homelessness, but never evaluated this huge outlay of public money actually improved the situation. In fact, in 2023, homelessness grew by 6% alone, with the state now home to approximately one-third of the entire country's unhoused population. I think we all cringe when we hear about taxpayer funds not being monitored for effectiveness or worse, failing to achieve the desired outcomes. As a taxpayer, I'm astonished at how some government agencies continue to fund programs that fall, for, fall, sh- that fall far short of intended goals year after year with no changes or adjustments. I do believe everyone in this room, and certainly those on the city council, have hoped that after 12 years of seating the Boys and Girls Club with generous funding by our taxpayers, the Boys and Girls Club program and RSM would be highly successful and flourish. I know that That is exactly how I feel. I know that is exactly how my husband feels. And so I made my first remarks on this matter several years ago. I shared that my husband has been on the board of directors for over 10 years of the Boys and Girls Club. During that time, we have both volunteered our time to the club. We've given generously and also successfully secured many, many donations to the club. At the time, several months ago, I also made it clear I did not want to have any discussions that would reflect negatively upon the club. However, it makes sense to me that some in the public wanted to understand the decision not to renew the contract. 
Also, as time has gone on, sadly, some of the public have misrepresented and weaponized the matter for their political purposes. I'll leave it up to you to discern who is who. For those reasons, I've asked for and received and appreciate unanimous council support to agendize this item tonight. Sadly, as we've learned, not all facts are complementary to the club. Not all facts are a continuing benefit to our taxpayers. However, amongst likely everyone in this room, with the exception of the lady from Melinda Heights, uh, who is a board member, and my husband, I've been most closely aligned with this club and invested in the success of this. So some of the nastiness and the ugliness that I've heard from this community to me is shocking. And I don't believe for one minute it typifies the type of behavior that we in the club embrace, support, or espouse. So I, I'm very disappointed. The key problem that the council faces with the Boys and Girls Club is about threefold. The first, it, coming out of COVID in 2021, the state enacted the ELOP program, the Expanded Learning Opportunities Program, and funded it with, at that time, $2 billion. It's now $4 billion. It's anticipated to grow to $5 billion. That program, and I believe that has been acknowledged by the Boys and Girls Club, has siphoned some of the members from the Boys and Girls Club because it allows the children to stay at the school they're attending and receive after-school care there. So when we talk about the diminished attendance at the Boys and Girls Club, my purpose is not to blame the Boys and Girls Club or blame COVID. There's simply another program that has come along that's been funded by the state that seems to be attractive based on the attendance at this program at our schools. I think that's an important point of consideration. Secondly, the discussion about various funding uh, items that the council is uh, pursuing. Some of the funds that we use for these things are called restricted funds. We can't use them to fund the Boys and Girls Club or any social program. They're, most of them are either grant funds or they're funded through your gas taxes, which means it's, it's restricted to a use that is association, associated with roads, such as a median that was discussed. So I'd like to clarify that. The third issue we have is the gross disparity in the cost to the taxpayers in Rancho Santa Margarita for the club here in Rancho compared to their home location in San Juan Capistrano. In San Juan Capistrano, they own and maintain their own building. In Rancho Santa Margarita, the space is provided at no cost. It is maintained and it's cleaned and uh, given to the Boys and Girls Club. That was the choice of this city council. And by the way, I was here and approved all three contracts that allowed that to occur. And so did many of my other colleagues. What has occurred through time is the club has not grown here for purposes that I believe is of the club's own choice. Additional transportation could have been secured or offered by the club to come from more schools in Rancho Santa Margarita. For example, I, like, um, I'm so sorry, ma'am, the lady who spoke about being a board member, living in Melinda Heights, that's where I live, too. Jacqueline, sorry. Um, I, 
I live in Melinda Heights. The school, the elementary school in Melinda Heights is not a participant in the club. There's been no transportation offered, even if it's at a cost to the parents. So the fact that we haven't harvested or given opportunities to more schools, not for three years, not for two years, but for 12 years in Rancho, has created fewer attendees in the club. And that's a choice the club made. I didn't agree with it, but here we are. So given all of that, um, I am mindful, and I, I do take into strong consideration what the public wants. So I would like to make a friendly substitute motion uh, to Mayor Pro Tem McGurs and potentially, you did you second or? Jerry. So, okay, Jerry, I'm sorry, uh, Jerry second. A friendly uh, substitute motion. I understand the feelings of the public and I understand the desire of all of us that want to make the Boys and Girls Club succeed. However, like it or not, our primary responsibility as city council members is to manage the budget of the city. I can't support continuing the club at 900% higher than the city of San Juan Capistrano pays. We have also one third fewer hours in Rancho Santa Margarita. So we are paying nine times more per attendee than the city of San Juan Capistrano pays for 33% percent fewer hours. So I am okay with paying exactly what the city of San Juan Capistrano pays. And I am, my friendly emotion is, is the following. Uh, to extend the Boys and Girls Club contract for one year at the exact cost of the city of the city of San Juan Capistrano pays, less the adjustment for the hours. Thank you. I see no reason why we pay more than the city of San Juan Capistrano does. Thank you. I'll second that for discussion purposes. Council member comments. I, my comment is that I wanted the one-year extension with a six-month window for staff to work with the Boys and Girls Club to resolve many issues, not just a discrepancy between what San Juan Capistrano pays and what Rancho Santa Margarita pays, and to look at various alternatives if necessary, including kids, I, I can't recall the name of it right now, but Kids Factory or other uh, available after-school programs that might be worthwhile, or to in, Back, consider opening or starting our own program, which could be a STEM program or, or a derivative thereof. Um, with all due respect, I, I appreciate the friendly motion, uh, substitute motion, but I don't think um, I am going to second it because it's a, it, it sets a flat fee, for lack of a better word, uh, where it just takes away any opportunity to resolve the issues that we've already talked about. I, I am still very concerned about the fact that the city of Rancho Santa Margarita taxpayers are funding children who don't live in Rancho Santa Margarita. To me, that's the, in my mind, that's the biggest issue that I'm dealing with. And so um, those are my thoughts. Thank you. Um, I, my thought is, again, we are just talking about, we're talking about a one-year renewal. And I... Want, I agree with Councilmember McGurr that I think this is completely reasonable um, for the amount that we've been paying them. And um, I'm going to agree with Councilmember McGurr on this. Councilmember Holloway. Thank you. I do have some thoughts now. And I do appreciate this process. Um, we're all trying to get to the best place we can get to. Um, I, I did actually put a specific, uh, you know, a 15% uh, reduction number. I mean, I understand the concept of putting a number on, but I think moving forward, if there's support, enough support that, I th you know, I, and I'm only guessing now with the, the reps from the Boys and Girls Club here now, they understand our concerns. They're hearing our concerns. In conversations with them, 
they're willing to go in there, get in, get in and, and do as, as good of a job as they can to address our concerns. What that ultimately looks like, we don't know, because that's their world. That's, they created that budget, and I'm, you know, I have my opinions about, you know, can staffing change, but that's not, that's too much of the weeds right now. The, you know, the request that you, or the motion you made is, is substantial, and I'm not, I don't know what I'm ultimately going to vote when this is, comes back to us. If they're, and I, you know, they are interested in, and I've had conversations, they are interested in, in, in looking at and trying to work this out. But I do, in reference to your, I think that's such a substantial number, um, that may not be reachable. I, I don't know. I'm not comfortable with that number. What I'm comfortable with, like, you know, with uh, Mayor Pro Tem, is that we, we get in there. I, I'm very adamant about the six-month process or less. Because if we end up saying, no, we're not, we're not comfortable with the numbers, we need to give folks many, as long as they can possibly have to make other arrangements for what, what they're using. But, um, and, I, and I think, from my conversation, six months is a reasonable amount of time. And I'm, I'm seeing a few head nods that that's a reasonable, may, maybe less, it depends. But I think, uh, to your motion, um, it's a little high of a number to hit that may not be possible. Um, and I wouldn't want to restrict it just to that because either hit that number or, or, or you're out. I'm not, I don't, it doesn't sound good. Hit that number or we won't renew. Um, I think that's a little strong, but... Um, I, should, I should clarify, uh, at the uh, cost of the San Juan Capistrano Club uh, times 100 children, which I think was our threshold, uh, plus the uh, no cost of, of this, the zero charge for the space, we would be at $122,200 all in for the services, which frankly serve at the moment to count uh, Mayor Pro Tem McGurr's point forty children that are residents of Rancho Santa Margarita. So that 85000 is added into that. I'm, I wasn't taking that out. Right. And there, there, there isn't anything I've heard tonight from council members that I don't share the same concerns with. I mean, we all do. Um, with the, our original decision was to not renew the contract, and things have changed a little bit for myself. Um, you know, I, Nicole allowed me to interrogate her over and over because my, my experience with the Boys and Girls Club was minimal. So I needed to find out, and she, I mean, it was like I was grinding her with questions. I mean, almost every other day, and talking to a board member Red was today. I mean, it's the same kind of thing. We're trying to, you know, they're educating. I was being educated because I don't have much knowledge, experience like you do with the Boys and Girls Club. So it was something that, um, you know, I wish I'd done earlier. It's my fault. I didn't. But we, here we are. And, and I think the process of letting them get in and do the best job they can based on what they've heard from us now, what we may, you know, talk to the city manager about, because I'm sure she's like, okay, let's clarify this as much as we can. If it ends up moving forward, you probably are going to want to know a little bit more about what this picture needs to look like to go forward with to have discussions. It's my opinion that it's not the city's responsibility or, or, or authority to go into, we're not, we're not going to go into their budget and, you know, hey, you need to do this or do that. We have, can have an opinions, but it's, it's their responsibility to see if they can cut back. Um, if they can't, they can't. If they, you know, one thing that that I certainly learned and knew, um, the bulk of their money is fund. I mean, it's uh, it's the cities and fundraising. So they're out there just grinding away, getting fundraising money, which is harder and harder to get. I get that. I understand that. And I don't know that that's that picture increases. I mean, it's tougher and tougher. And that 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 uh, you know, nonprofit dollar is hard to come by because there's a lot of people out there trying to get. You know, their hands on it. So whether or not this is viable, maybe, you know, hey, what does it look like in three or four years? Well, it may or may not. We don't know. We have a, probably a better idea of what the picture is financially than we might what the enrollment might be. But again, I know I'm kind of getting late and beating, beating down here a little bit, but I need to see that per person number decrease, hopefully, and I don't know exactly what that number is and what it maybe looks the year after that, I mean, if it's a 15% de decrease next year, but it looks like it's going to be 30% higher the next year, no, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not comfortable with that. Because um, I don't know the comparison that exists at $5,700 per person all in. I don't know any other entity where that exists. And on the other side of it, if someone 
came to me and said, how can you justify $5,700 per person? And it's not like there's evil people stealing money here. This is what it is. I don't know what answer I could give. I mean, I could say, well, here's what it looks like. And, you know, well, wow, how are you, how are you okay with that? Even at the 2,000, I have issues. Mm -hmm. But I, may, I might be wrong. That's why I think a deep dive is, is worth doing. So that's, I mean, I'm kind of repeating what I, what I brought up earlier, but it's one of the... For clarification, addresses. are you um, supporting a one-year contract at the existing rate? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Just wanted to, just wanted to check on that. Council member comments? Council member Beal. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to reiterate for the benefit of the public that might be concerned, as well as for every member of this city council, I'd urge you to reread the staff report from our January 10th meeting and to listen to the comments that we all made during that meeting. Staff confirmed during that presentation, I believe both in writing and during that meeting, that the only available space for the repurposed museum learning center that we all embraced was the space occupied by the Boys and Girls Club, and that it would be available at the expiration of their existing contract. The desire of this unanimous city council was to provide a new program there that would, the design would be to benefit the entire community in a more cost-effective manner. Every child at a reasonable cost per head Unlike the annual costs under the Boys and Girls Club contract, which, as we've discussed ad nauseum, is significant, there's a one-time cost, really, to implement the new museum learning center. And that number, as was pointed out, is probably about $150,000. The city manager mentioned that she had heard from a very respected person that whatever you think the number is, you should just double it for these early discussions. So I, the real number is probably $150,000. There won't then be annual expenditures. And we owe a duty to the entire community to be careful stewards of the taxpayer dollars. Listen to the comments that each of you made during that meeting when you voted unanimously to repurpose that space after the club's contract expired, every council member. It was based on that unanimous city council action on January 10th that our city manager went and told the Boys and Girls Club that when that contract expired, it was, that was going to be it. And so this apparent change of heart that I'm hearing tonight by a majority of my council members, I'm sorry. It's disappointing to me because I feel like you have put this community and this city through unnecessary stress and division for many months. And I think that's a disservice to the entire community. As I said before, I believe the current contract provides an extraordinary amount of money to an extraordinarily small universe of beneficiaries. And that will, as Council Member Holloway just mentioned, that would be very hard to explain to someone that might ask and voice concern. But apparently there's a, been a change of heart. I just wish that these positions would have been made clear on January 10th because we wouldn't be here tonight. Everybody wouldn't be here in the audience, and we wouldn't be sitting here at this hour. Any further council member comments? Council member Holloway. Yeah, I have a question. So if you're putting the blame on all of this on the three of us that appear to be voting a certain way, I think you should speak to that a little bit more. We're here because we got more information, which is our, our sole purpose here. So if you want to put all of this on us, you couldn't be more wrong. So go ahead and explain that a little bit more because I'm really interested. What I, what I said just now. I heard what you said. Go ahead. I think it speaks for itself. I'm hearing unanimous concern about these numbers and uh, inability to explain them to somebody that might ask. I know that this community and this city has gone through a very difficult period of a few months based upon the unanimous vote that 
this city council took. That is why the city manager was given direction to tell the Boys and Girls Club, this city decided we're going to go in a different direction, install a museum and learning center. It would allow field trips for all of our uh, school children to go and attend to. It would even be available for adults. It would preserve and highlight for everyone what makes this community such a special place. Um, listen to it, and you'll hear your own, everyone's own words. I'm just, I'm saddened to find ourselves sitting here tonight after the council knowingly voted on January 10th to direct the city manager to go and tell the Boys and Girls Club that at the expiration of their term, they would need to vacate. And now, on today's date, there's a, a change of heart. I just wish we could have avoided the angst, anxiety, division, stress, controversy of the past several months. Madam Mayor? Absolutely. I agree. I'll take full responsibility. I voted for something on January 10, and I wish I hadn't. Since that time, I had an opportunity to speak with a lot of people in this audience. I get a lot of emails, I get a lot of phone calls, I get a lot of direct messages on Facebook, I get a lot of Twitter comments, I get a lot of people with a lot of input, and I changed my mind. And for anyone on this council to say, and I'll quote, it's irresponsible to suggest that the current contract be extended or that there are viable alternatives to the Boys and Girls Club. And we all know that TLC is impacted and that every, there's a waiting list. We all know that. And to say that I am being irresponsible in performing my duty here, I take offense at that. I'll leave it at that. Colleagues, we have all... Um, Listen carefully. I'm, I'm going to jump in here. Um, and I appreciate very much so the comments made from the public. And I appreciate the passion from the public. And I also appreciate the hour of the evening, which um, history has shown us all that we never are at our best at this time of the night. So I'd like to put aside some of these personal comments and personal differences. So we have a, a motion on the floor to extend the contract for a year. And I'd like to be clear on the terms so that, that, that you want and the direction you want to give this, the Point of order, manager. Madam Mayor. Yes. You made a substitute motion that was seconded. Oh, yes. My substitute motion was to offer the Boys and Girls Club a one-year contract at, with free space as they have now in their existing location uh, for the identical price that uh, the city of San Juan Capistrano pays up to 100 attendees, which is $372 per attendee. That was my motion. All those in favor? Aye. Well, that's kind of quiet. So that means that motion failed. So we have, going back to the original motion, which was your motion, council we member. We should call for the no's. Pardon me? We should call for the no's. Thank you. A roll call for or, the no's, Or the please. substitute motion could be withdrawn it, based on where you're at. You have a choice right now. You could withdraw the substitute motion, or you could call for the full vote on the substitute motion. Let's just do a roll call of the no's, just for clarity. <clears throat> council member Holloway. No. Council Member Beal. No. Council Member Figueroa. No. Mayor Pro Tem McGurr. No. Thank you very much. So moving on to the original motion, which is to extend the contract for one year and at the existing price of $120,000. You had mentioned that you were bothered by attendance of uh, children that were not Rancho residents do you want to pro provide any boundaries to that or not? No. I think it's important to sorry. give this information to the city manager. I, my motion was a one-year extension at $120,000 that within the first six months, 
staff work with the Boys and Girls Club to resolve some of the issues, hopefully, that we've talked about tonight, including, but not limited to, the fact that the city taxpayers are paying for programs for children who do not live in Rancho Santa Margarita, and that the costs of the um, program in Rancho Santa Margarita might be higher than it is for Liso Viejo or San Juan Capistrano. That would be my motion, that there be, uh, that staff would work with the Boys and Girls Club and provide alternatives as stated in the report, where it said, now again, I, I, the report specifically references the fact that there are a multitude, quote unquote, of other programs and that additional research would be required for more detailed information into funding amounts, funding mechanisms, and program offerings. I simply want to see a year to try to get this resolved. And as Councilmember Holloway pointed out, if we can have a six-month window in which to work on this, and if it can't be resolved, the folks sitting in the audience will have more time to figure out what they're going to do with their after-school program with their children. It's that simple. Can I ask for some clarification? What, what would be the goal after six months? For example, um, if uh, the club can't reduce its costs, if they can't get you know, additional schools, I, I think we need to know what the trigger is you know, for the six months versus a year. After six months, if there is no viable alternative, staff will come back to us with a report indicating what the alternatives are, if any, what their negotiations have been with the Boys and Girls Club regarding the issues that have been presented tonight, and also, I mentioned earlier, the costs associated with starting our own STEM program or something as, as similar. And the, uh, do we, just a point of clarification, we have a city policy regarding extending existing contracts a number of times prior to going out for an RFP. Are we in violation of that policy if we approve this decision tonight? I don't believe so. Okay. But, but what is unclear is are we talking with this motion about a 12-month extension or are we talking about a six-month extension? 12-month extension. 12-month extension with some sort of performance objectives within the first six. Correct. Do you want the extension to be terminable at will by the city then so that if within the first six months no. they don't after six months if there's no viable options we then have six months left for the boys and girls club to complete okay. their contract and to allow the residents the parents to work on alternative programs or alternative so, um, so it's a 12-month extension yeah, at it's, 120. A 12, it's, it's simply a 12-month extension correct at 120 okay is the intention to give the boys and girls club and their parents notice by a certain date, for example, December 31st or January 5th? I don't have a date in mind. I, okay. I can tell you the one-year extension, I think, goes to July, from what July it was, 13th, July 15th, right. 2025. So six months backing off from that Correct. would be that date. So Correct. almost the first meeting of January 2025. Sure. Okay. All right. I think that's, that that's clearer to me. There's a point of clarification. So... Yeah. And yeah. to your motion, um, mm -hmm. I, I borrow you two for a second, uh, Nicole, and Mr. Redwoods, please, because I want to find out if this is reasonable. And while well, they're coming up, just to clarify, again, this is caveated by it's a direction to staff to prepare this document based on the terms set forth in the motion. Correct. Okay. My thoughts are six months or less is a reasonable time for the Boys and Girls Club to digest this, have conversations as a board, as a staff, and come back with a proposal or not to address these concerns, comes back to the staff. We then have a similar discussion based on what is presented to us. Now, as discussed, is that something that's a reasonable request? 100%, yes. I agree. Yep. Time frame-wise, and this is such an unfair question. Get that same cooperation from the city manager and everyone being available so we can meet and have that discussion? Well, there's no question you'll get cooperation. We have a, a great staff. That goes without saying. You didn't have to ask that question. Um, is it something that, in just I know this is not a fair question necessarily, is that process and, and getting back with some numbers um, something, roughly how long do you think that would take? I, I, that's unfair, but what, what's in your mind when we're talking about this? It's been three hours, four hours here. We passed the budget July 1st is when our fiscal year starts. 
And so Rob and I would start working on it starting tomorrow to start looking at those numbers and honoring the requests made today. Do you think it'd be something that would come back sooner than six months from I, today? I have a, a good feeling, yes. yes. As if we incorporate those changes in next year's budget, we passed that, well, at our last board meeting in June, which takes effect July 1st. So that would be the whole contract cycle for that one year extension. Okay. Just thank you for that. From the our city goal would be to resolve that as quickly as possible. So if it's not going to work, we can give our parents again as much lead time that's as possible. Right, that's so we're we highly motivated yeah, to yeah, get yeah. back to you as quickly as we can. Yeah, got it. Um, city Manager Cervantes um, it appears this, this is going to go forward. What you probably have more questions for us? Clarification on what this process needs to look like. Uh, no, just to, to reiterate what the city attorney said, understanding that this would be a uh, direction for staff to go and prepare that extension. So as I understand it, it's a one-year extension at, at $120,000 that we would bring back to another council meeting for the council to approve that extension. I just want to make sure that everyone's clear that the vote here is to direct staff to prepare that, and it doesn't mean that there's a signature on an, on an extension. I just want to be clear with that. Uh, and then I also understand that we would be direct, you would be directing staff to work with uh, the Boys and Girls Club on addressing the issues that have brought, been brought up tonight. And I think we've enumerated those substantially that we have a good understanding of that. The other, the one piece of some clarification, though, is the concept of identifying other alternatives and other programs within six months. I don't, I, I would need to look at the recreation staff here tonight and ask them what their um, comfort and availability is to do something of that nature. I, I, I would rather not have a six month time frame on that, especially if we're going to be spending our time working with the Boys and Girls Club on addressing those issues, sort of having that dual track at the same time, especially leading into, we have budget, we have summer months. It's, it, it may not be, um, easy for the staff over in the community center to work on that secondary track at the same time of identifying alternatives. That's not to say that they can't start that, but I would rather not have a six month uh, deadline on that particular aspect of the motion. Madam Mayor, does the there is, there's a motion on the table now, isn't there? Right. Yes. Okay. Does do, you the, need, do we need to repeat that motion? Well, I was going to ask, does the maker of the motion want to revise it? We're in the process of clarifying it, it for it. city okay. staff. Given, given what, may, I'm sorry, Madam Mayor. I was going to say, does the maker of the motion want to <laughs> revise G yes, an aspect given, of it? Yes, given the city manager's comments regarding the time constraints in researching available alternatives, um, you know, I would withdraw that aspect of the motion. In other words, the motion would be a $120,000 one-year extension, work with the uh, Boys and Girls Club. Uh, please begin researching the alternatives if they do exist. I, I got to believe they do. We know at least one that's being used by Lake Forest, mm -hmm. um, but it may not be ready in six months, and I, I understand that. So with that uh, caveat, I would just renew the motion. There's a second on the motion. I agree. Councilmember Holloway. I'm sorry. Because he just revised the motion that you had seconded, so we need your agreement on it. Yeah. It was, okay. Yes, yes. Point of clarification. I'm confused. There was extended discussion about a number of conditions that need to be built into addressing the concerns that this council has addressed, and that has to be resolved to the satisfaction of the city within six months. Is that correct? That's what's being removed. All of it? No. I thought the only thing that was being removed was what the city manager said about alternatives. Correct. Is that but there were, uh, like, for example, uh, to make it the explanation between San Juan Capistrano services versus ours on a per head basis. I mean, I, I, th I thought that's what you were getting at. You had voiced a number of concerns that you wanted to be addressed in the new contract. What, what I'm hearing from the city manager is the issue of the potential of some of these programs being handled by city staff would take more than six months. So far, so good? Mm -hmm. Yes, there's okay. two separate issues. So that component, which in my, what I'm hearing, is the six-month time frame still exists for the, the club to get back to us with any kind of potential 
uh, cost reduction. If there was going to be some of the services done by city staff at the Boys and Girls Club are gone, that, to, that can't be decided in six months. So far, so good? I, I, would, I would agree with that. I mean, if, you, if, it, if the staff were directed to find alternative programs, I mean, I think we've already exhausted what those alternatives are that are the universe of alternatives. And there might be one or two that are viable, maybe not at the same level that the Boys and Girls Club's providing over there, but there might be some that are viable. But if, if the directions of staff is you know, build a program, you know, figure out ways to fund a program, figure out, you know, what all of these other cities are doing and how they operate it, that we cannot do in six months. Well, and that come was up never, that was never requested. I mean, I think you... It was. <laughs> yeah, that yeah it actually was, yeah. <laughs> right, oh, okay. right. And, and that's what I'm saying, that we we would not, and then be able to come up with a proposal to put forth in the budget for it. That, that was the, the big concern to me. But if I could... Just to, to clarify for Council Member Beal, what I'm, what I'm hearing, and I think what the city attorney has written down on his paper, is a 12-month extension, and it goes the entire 12 months. It goes for $120,000 the entire time. But there is a six-month check-in, I would say, wh whereas city staff and the Boys and Girls Club are going to work on ways to address the concerns that have been brought here today about transportation, funding, um, hours, all of those things. But there's no there's no deliverable at the end of that. The six months is a time for us to work through it, but if at the end there's no proposal, then the, the entire six the entire twelve month contract still stands. Mm -hmm. That that's what I'm hearing. Twelve month extension. I thought that what I heard was a desire to ensure that we don't end up in the same position now, that there should be adequate time given to the members of the community so they could make other arrangements. And the maker of the motion wanted a six-month time frame for the Boys and Girls Club to present cost reduction proposals to the city for review within six months. That's what I heard very clearly. And, my, yes. and, and so if that is what the motion is, I think that needs that concept needs to be expressly built into the extension. new extension because and, and what we what staff would do is staff would come back at six months um, with the results of the efforts that have occurred over those six months and report that back to the council and the council would have an opportunity to deliberate on that ask more questions provide different direction or continue with the allowing the contract extension to terminate in six months time from that point in time that that that's what i believe would occur in six months right well just a point of clarification it might just be a verbiage issue i apologize to everybody but we're trying to get this right at the six month point or sooner boys and girls club will present a report to city staff and it'll show that there's a way to reduce the numbers or there isn't what it might look like. That, in turn, six months or sooner, will be presented to the city council to deliberate on. We either like those numbers or we don't. We don't like them. The, the contract doesn't get renewed at the end of 12 months. We do like the numbers. The contract's going to get renewed for another 12 months or whatever time period we, we decide is appropriate. Am I saying this right? Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, there's options. We haven't crossed that bridge yet, but after that point, we could terminate the extension and enter into a new contract, or you can just let the 12 months run out and be prepared to discuss the terms of a new contract after the 12-month period. With, with the purpose I think we're trying to accomplish too much here in one night. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to get it right. Well, there, there. Uh, that's the, thank you. you. You're correct. We do need to get it right. I think what's fortunate is that if the council votes to tonight to direct staff to prepare a 12 month extension at 120 thousand with these other, you know, the six month or sooner report, we can go back and prepare that, and that would be what you would be voting on. So there is an opportunity to get it right in writing when we have it in front of us at the next council meeting that we're able to bring this forward to you. You don't need to get exactly all of those details at this moment. I think it's impossible to have all those details at this moment, so. 
I think it's possible to have expressed in the contract a six-month requirement that the club provide a proposal to the city council for their review in terms of the cost reductions that the maker of the motion requested. I think that's what's understood, right? Yes? Very good. I'll call for the question. Thank you. I just have one question. I just have one thing to say, one question for, for the uh, Boys and Girls Club staff. Thank you for your patience. Can you help me understand why the cost in Rancho is nine times that of San Juan? I don't have the numbers in front of me, and of course you know that it's late. Mm -hmm. um, Let's just say the cost in Rancho is many times, many multiples of that in San Juan. Yeah, so I would want to go back and check those numbers because we had them very comparable. Because when I was speaking with um, Council Member Holloway, we ran all those numbers based on the number of kids served in San Juan, that exact budget. Mm -hmm. And then um, Aliso and Rancho Santa Margarita, and they were very comparable. So we have uh, on our PowerPoint presentation, which copy is in the back on page 11. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm going to ask of you yeah. is that uh, the city of San Juan contributes 78,060 and Dana points 25,000. So we look at that together because we can't you know, distinguish mm -hmm. how many Dana Point children go to the Via Pastiva Club versus San Juan Capistrano. So that's unfair to try to you know, yeah. split that apart. So we added them together. And then we took the numbers from your website regarding attendees at 277 children. And so combined, that's how we got to 372. Of course, you own your own, and you own and maintain your own building. So when we look to the Rancho Santa Margarita costs, we look at uh, not the, actually the current attendance. We're looking at cost per attendee. Um, at 60, which is more than the Rancho children, for 120,000 plus our cost for the space that we provide to you. So that's a pretty big difference. Even if we didn't divide, you know, have a um, a cost for the space, it's roughly $372 uh, per attendee in San Juan Capistrano, and it's $2,000 aside from the cost of our space in Rancho. That's a big difference. And so what I want to make sure that we're doing, I, I understand one of the things that my colleagues would like to do is to bridge the urgency for the current attendees. I understand that. But I, what I don't want to do is have you set up to not achieve a goal of parity between the two locations. Most certainly. Is that equality, both in the service. Now, the hours are set by the city, so, you know, they are they are what they are. And so I understand there will always be fewer hours in Rancho Santa Margarita than there are in San Juan. I understand that. But the parity, the cost to provide similar services, I mean, the, the, the quality of the staff you have in Rancho is just as good if than the staff you have in San Juan. I understand the rigor that you go through with your employees. What I, what I struggle with, and I, I'm overstating this point, is there is such an inequality in the cost to our taxpayers. It's not a slight on your program, but it's a tremendous uh, inequality, both in the services and the cost. Are we setting you up to succeed to achieve parity? We'll go back and we'll run those numbers. Parity of service is of the utmost important to us. And so we want to make sure that all the kids across the board have the same opportunities. But we will go back and well, I think you do first. that. So by the way, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm not being confusing in my remarks to you. I do believe you service the children you know, in each one of your clubs similarly. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about kind of servicing our taxpayers. Mm -hmm. So the taxpayers in San Juan pay significantly less per each child that attends the club than the taxpayers in Rancho Santa Margarita. And I don't even want to talk about Aliso Viejo. That's, that's their own fish to fry. But I want to achieve parity in the costs of this club uh, between our location and San Juan. Are we setting you up to succeed 
to achieve that. Yeah. So one thing I just want to clarify really quick, our San Juan Capistrano contract was increased last year, so the number on the staff report is wrong. It's $103,058. So that happened July 1st last year. Um, we got our number from the city manager in San Juan, so he may not be aware that your contract is increased. Oh, and we got I mean, it. they oh. voted on it. I, I know. We, we got it recently. <laughs> it, it was it was what was in the budget, and maybe they had changed it after the budget was. Or, or we may be the bearer of bad news, and I'm sorry. That's okay. But, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to jump the gun uh, on any plans that they have. So I mean, I'm happy to readjust my numbers. So I think accuracy is important here, yeah. and that's why I've been very specific in my remarks regarding your staff and the level of competency of them. Thank you. So what I what I do want to do and I want it so clear, is to achieve parity in the cost of the taxpayers. Our taxpayers shouldn't be subsidizing San Juan. They should not be paying more per attendee than San Juan, uh, in my opinion. So uh, with that, I'll, I'll you, call the question. Mayor, just a point of clarification to your point of talking to them about achieving parity. That's not part of this motion. So I don't want you to think that that's your goal. And if you don't achieve that goal, the contract doesn't get no, I that's not I part agree. of the, that's not part of the motion. I, I know that's her yep. desire, yep. but I don't want that to be you, you think that that's your goal here. That's not that's not part of the motion. Well, I, I appreciate Mayor Pratemagur's comment to me that it's a reasonable desire, but I think it's important for you to hear from all five council members as to what our desires are. And I wanted to ask you if it's achievable because I don't want us to set you up with um, a situation that you're gonna come back and cut it 5% or something and it's, it's not gonna be acceptable. So just having said that, I'll be happy to call the question now and we'll do a roll call vote. One thing. I'm sorry. I don't know if we'll have this back at the next council meeting, so we'll need to work on these details, and we'll bring it back at the earliest possible time. That makes sense. Is that acceptable? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I'll start to my left. I'll start with the maker of the motion. Thank you, guys. You can actually sit down. Yes. Um, thank you very much. Um, maker of the motion, Council um, Mayor Pro Tem McGurr. Aye. Councilmember Holloway. Aye. Councilmember Figueroa? Aye. Councilmember Beal? Nope. Uh, I am going to say aye. I have a challenged aye. I don't like the cost of the, the proposal, but I can also count to three. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate the input from the community. I appreciate your attendance tonight. Um, I appreciate all the thoughts of my council members and uh, members of the public. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Finkel. And I'm, I'm happy to have you back here in the house that you helped build. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming, and, and I so appreciate that. Um, item number eight, burning the midnight oil here. Um, continued items, thank goodness we have none. Uh, item number nine, public comments. I'm not sure there's any member of the public.